Hey everyone, it's Cindy. Welcome back to Mass Make March here on Studio Lou. We are at the sort of kind of halfway point of day 15 making collage boards. So today is going to be super relaxed. We are going to just be making collage boards. Um, get yourself a cup of tea. That's what I did. We're just going to relax. Um, I recommend get a book, a big book that you have in your stash that's got a bunch of pages in it that like you just don't want to deal with, you know, like they're not important to you in any way. So these books, these are character sketches. Um, so they're like two things, nature pictures that I love, yes, and then scripture type stuff, which I don't use in my work personally. Um, so I'm going to use these nice big pages and the bigger pages, the better, because we're going to be using our scraps to make collages. Um, and that's all we're going to be doing. We're not even going to be cutting those up or anything. This is about building a stash of collage pages, okay? So collage boards. So I'm going to add a little bit of controversy to this, um, to this video as we get started, because that's what I do. I'm always, you know, very big on helping to kind of like trying to help to like make people think a little bit outside the box on, on terminologies and things that don't make sense anymore. You know, in the vein of when you know you can do better, right? Like when we know better, we do better. So I often hear collage boards being referred to as master boards, okay? So not only is it wrong, it's also insensitive for a couple reasons. So it's wrong because the term actually comes from the design world when you would create something that was like actually your master illustration board, almost like a cell. Um, the term master has been associated with like that thing that is untouchable, untarnishable. You don't use it for anything. Um, it, that's why you call it your master. It's like the one in, you know, in technology that it just doesn't get touched. Okay. Um, so you wouldn't be cutting it up. You'd be maybe scanning it. You'd be, you know, publishing it, but you wouldn't be actually using that particular one. Right. Um, so that being said, why is it insensitive as a term? So as part of my um, di diversity and um, my DEI uh, type, type work that I do, um, it's my job to learn a lot about these things and um, fix them in the business world. So some we, we created some time ago um, at my company and we provided directives to several other companies about terminologies that should no longer exist in business. Things like whitelist and blacklist, where whitelist is good and blacklist is bad, and master and slave for obvious reasons, okay? So those are terminologies that should not be used so lightly, so gently in your day-to-day -day work. Um, you know, no judgment here. I think we all learn these things. Most of us probably learn them from other journal makers and you know, like it, it's just always been there, right? So um, I absolutely will make zero judgment if people continue to use that, if it's just what they do, but I just implore you to think about it. You know, that's all I ask. So let's get started. I have a gigantic bin. Well, it's not gigantic. Let me show you. Hold on. My scrap bin. This is my scrap bin. And I know it's really close, but this is what it looks like. This is my scrap bin. It's this blue container from a dollar store. And I have a rule about scraps that if they hit the floor, they hit the trash, they hit the recycle bin because I can't have them all over my house. It drives me crazy. So I'm going to get cozy and start um, pulling scraps out of here. And I think I want to attack this in a way that's kind of like color themed because I often find like, you know, you can use similar colors, colors that you like together. Um, and that will give you like a nice basis. So when you're creating a collage board, you have a couple options. One, it's a background or two, you want to use the whole entire thing. So you're going to decorate it up and you're going to add little bits and bobs. Um, it's a good way to make digitals. It's, it's, there's a lot of fun things you can do. Just be careful with any copywritten material because you can't scan that and sell it. Um, things like stamps, you know, papers, whatever. Um, if you don't own them, you can't, you know, sell them. So that being said, I will get my scraps going and we will start to have some fun. Alrighty, I am back and ready to go on this project. Um, I 
just need a couple more things here. Where is my tearing ruler? There it is. Well, it's not a tearing ruler. It's just a ruler. <laughs> um, here we go. So I'm just having a cozy afternoon. My work day is done. Thank goodness. Oh my goodness. It was a long day. And I'm so happy to just be working in the studio now. As I'm filming this and I am filming a little ahead of time so that I can um, have a vacation in March because you know you have to do everything in life at the same time we are expecting a winter storm so I'm hoping that actually that allows me to kind of get a few videos done that would be nice I was making this morning and so if you recognize some of these papers from another video that it's the scraps from them this would be why because I was definitely working away okay. and it's going to be very handy to just have these um, collage boards because they are so handy when you're looking to make ephemera <clears throat> you can do so many things with them. Uh, I'm going to do that. I'm just going to throw that back in scraps. It's not going to work for this. I'm looking for more kind of neutrals and pinks in this one. Could go with that side maybe. these other pages out of my way because they make me feel all imbalanced. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I have all of this old scrap of paper that's been hanging around from an old scrapbook and I think this I don't want to use because I feel like it would make really fun pockets. Anything with words like this I'm just going to set aside because I want to go through the words. I have a little bit of this. I don't often make um, collage boards with scrapbook paper, but I happen to have a lot of scrapbook paper in my stash right now, so I'm going to use it because it makes sense to do that. And these colors are really nice, so. <clears throat> oh yes, this, this has been hanging out in my scraps for so long and I won't get rid of it. I need to like make some stamps or something with it. Um, you know what? While we're here, let's just do it right now. <laughs> And I can get rid of this piece of paper. I just want to clip out the birds. Okay, one more. Okay, we can dispose of that now. And the world won't be sad at me for <clears throat> wasting paper. It's not the right colors. Um, maybe a little blue would be nice. So this is the poem of the owl and the pussycat. And I think what I'll do is I will actually tear this out. And I'll just put it right into my word bin. Because 
it's a nice little verse that I can use somewhere. So much like beautiful scrapbook paper with my thrift my recent thrift haul oh my gosh i feel so spoiled because i don't often buy scrapbook paper mainly because like i have enough i don't need to be buying it but it's nice when you find it at the recycle center i actually stopped there um like a couple days ago which is like a week after probably my original thrift haul where I got a lot of scrapbooking supplies and there was <clears throat> I was just kind of like dropping some things off and thought I would take a look inside and it was funny because there was a lady in there who I'm pretty sure she does something paper artish and um she looked like she was really looking for like that kind of thing and I was thinking like oh geez I cleaned this place out the other day you don't even want to know <laughs> do you ever do that when you're thrift shopping like you know you think about you know your competition <laughs> not really competition but like have you ever seen somebody grab something that you really really want and you kind of like wait to see if they're gonna put it back and you like will them to put it back like you don't need it well there was this man one day <clears throat> that's pretty um and he was at a thrift store that i was at and he was like picking up all these nature books and oh <clears throat> he had such nice books and i was like put them down step away but he didn't and i had to just deal with it <laughs> um and i apologize if my voice is still a little gravelly you know this is the cold that never ends even though I'm feeling so much better, oh my gosh, I'm like really come around the bend there. Um, thankfully, because that was not fun. Is this, yeah, I can use all that. It's not a branding strip, it's just another pattern. I like to use these on the edges and then I can cover my whole edge. bit of maybe purple on this one this is some I think 49 and market paper they have such beautiful paper okay. I'm actually gonna get rid of this this is like I don't know if I'm ever going to use this. It's been sitting in my stash for so long. Oh my gosh. Look at these little bunnies. They're so cute. Um, Anderson's Fairy Tales. That's just some nice little paper. Let's put that down. The Little Mermaid. I like to use like yellowy kind of older papers on my collage. I don't know what I'll ever, I'll probably just use this as backing now that I think about it. <clears throat> Let's use this little piece, maybe right here. I don't know if anybody else watched I mean this goes a ways back now um, but I was just thinking about it today because I saw a Bernese mountain dog <clears throat> did anybody else listen to the Gail Agostinelli video 
where she's talking about remember her dog Jimmy Joe oh my gosh she told the cutest story like that literally just made me like teary it was so cute <laughs> because like I think I was having one of those days but um yeah like so you know she had that dog Jimmy Joe and he was um, a Bernese Mountain Dog but they and they had him since he was a puppy but then they had to get rid of him because he was eating rocks and like he had a very expensive surgery and most of their property or a lot of their backyard I guess is rocks and so she had to get rid of him and you know she didn't feel so good about it but then she just found out that like he was so she I wouldn't say got rid of him but she gave him to um, a college that trains service dogs and so she ended up finding out that like a childhood like a kid that she babysat you know when he was like a little kid ended up with her dog like you know she tells the whole story I'm not going to tell the whole story because it's not my story to tell but like it was so sweet and I was like so touched by the whole thing I'm like that's adorable it's funny how things loop around like that sometimes okay it's here Oh, that's a pretty one. I actually think I'm going to cover, I know it's a little bad, but I'm going to cover up that gray. I, I'm not so happy with it. <clears throat> we might as well just cover it if I don't like it, right? Let's go over here. Okay. Hmm, maybe some of this nice neutral like this is from an old Mennonite book. It's like old typewriting from like a Mennonite newsletter. Me and my weird papers, of, all, of course, that I always get from estate auctions. Plunk that there. And I might use just one more little strip of this to just, um, cover up this line here a little bit. Okay. Two down. All right. Then I've been saving this like teal text paper. So like, let's use some of it. more aqua than teal I suppose. Okay. So my son has just learned <clears throat> rock paper scissors and he loves it so much and he keeps doing it except he does it when I least expect it so he runs up to me he's like rock paper scissors and like <laughs> it's like he ends with rock and he's just like a little intense so sometimes he gets very excited about things that he's just figured out oh my gosh I'm like I can't do any more rock paper scissors so I gotta go <laughs> get away oh. kids are so funny okay And some of this nice green log paper, but 
I will clip the end of this off and use that for something different because I don't like how it gouges my glue. I need to dye paper. Oh gosh, I need to dye green paper. I need to dye coffee and tea dyed papers. <clears throat> looking at my paper this morning and thinking I better dye some paper. I'll probably do some this weekend because we're going to be trapped in this storm I think. Mm, not that. Not this. use this little strip because it has roses on it and it's so pretty. <clears throat> Just heard my husband choke. Ready, set, go. And I have no idea what he's doing up there, but <laughs> uh, I will find out soon enough. I'm going to make dinner in one hour. I'm going to make a big hearty like pasta with tomatoes and mushrooms and all sorts of stuff. As pretty as this picture is, I'm going to use it in my collage. Um, because it's a really wide, big picture. Alright. I just remembered that my papers are in the press for my journal. I'll take them out of there. reorganizing my studio because I I got a new well I got a new spot to keep my paper press and I was reminded that I had this whole plan to reorganize and put my press behind me <clears throat> because I saw that um Catherine Brown on her channel she just got a paper press too and yeah, I have had mine for a while and I've wanted to set it up and I finally got it set up because of course I always have to like rearrange everything when one thing needs to be done in my studio. Um, and yeah, we got it done. Some nice blue. Get rid of the white. I am slowly going through this old copy of Les Miserables. I uh, used the cover of the book for another journal and i um, just been using it as a glue book and I think we're halfway through it. It's always exciting to finish using a glue book for some reason. <laughs> down here. I mean, maybe some of this. Okay. Just go right off the edge there clip that just so we don't get glue everywhere okay then let's have some tea did you make yourself something did you get a snack did you get some tea or coffee or a nice juice or something because and I hope you're crafting along you're making along with me because it's probably boring to just watch me uh, do this, I don't know. Although I do know that like a lot of people like to just 
watch collage boards be made. I'm one of them, you know, I've been at bedtime. I, I just, there's so many people in the journal community that have this ability to just help me sleep. I watch like so many different channels for that reason. <clears throat> I mean, I watch their videos, like I actually watch their videos, but then, um, I will turn on a video I've already seen before to like help me kind of sleep and it's really nice. <laughs> I'm going to use a bit of this maybe. Oh no, I don't like the color. I need new scraps or more scraps. Okay. What do we have? Let's use some music. I feel like I really want to mass make today because this is like using up my scrap bin. So I'm like, let's go, let's go, hustle. Some of this. I saved this from like a columnar pad because I was like, oh, I like that blue. You know, the things we save, right? That's so funny. save this because it says 1974 I don't know but I like the number up here look at that grungy paper and that number that's a good reason to save that this this is like got an, like someone's stamp from their library on it it's really cool you know why I saved this because it was from some book that just had these really fun chapter numbers <clears throat> they're like written out with these like really vintagey very fun. It's a bit of eco dyed paper. We could use that. I need to get eco dyeing some paper. I actually got roses for Valentine's Day. I think I will use to do that. Though they're still, they're still doing quite beautifully. Excuse me. All right. Uh, let's use some of this. Now I feel like the color that this has gone to, that that purple at the bottom is going to have to go. So I think I'm going to cover it with this. We've gone a whole other direction here. Which is okay because this is actually um, lightweight paper. This, uh, image of this moon or whatever it was. Yeah, let's just cover this up as best we can. That's a good strip there and I can find it right here. This is perfect. You can't get more perfect than this strip of like gray stitching. Wow. Could not have planned that better if I tried. more of this. Let's add another piece of it maybe. of going out before the storm and buying some storm chips. Do they have storm chips where you live? 
we have storm chips. Um, I think they kind of originated in like probably some province of Canada like Newfoundland, you know, where you get these big storms and you need to kind of hunker down. And the storm chips that we have, they have like, they're like a mix of like dill pickle, salt and vinegar, barbecue, and like all dressed, I think, or sour cream and onion. Um, and I have like friends in the US who are like always super jealous about, <laughs> about storm chips, but I bet you they've got them somewhere in the US, you know, because there's places that have the same inclement weather as where I live. Somebody messaging me. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, this might be cool. What's this actually? That's like a bit of like iridescent sparkly paper. This might go kind of cool there. Let's do it. Like a painty paper with, um, I know what this paint is. It's like a pearl paint. Plop that on there. And actually what I should do is I should put this under it. So I'll take a section of this and we'll just kind of measure it. Right there. There we go. Okay. I also think I'm going to do some fun paper dyeing um, involving, well, like, yeah, I guess it's dyeing, but it's more painting, really. It's kind of a combo of the two. So I got all these old paints, like, from my recycle center. Somebody donated, like, a whole bin of. Um, old acrylic paint and you know it's it's still good to use it's just not easy to use so I was thinking of taking a brayer and just kind of braying it onto um, my papers that I want to like color because I think that that would make really nice paper like really nice painty paper I know some of the journals that I'm going to be working on, I'm going to need some kind of grungy and green and maybe even darker kind of colors. That's going to be me soon, snowed in. I'm going to tear that here and use some of it. some of this why not these old yearbook kids I love making things with old yearbooks I find yearbooks all the time actually and I uh, I've stopped buying them because <clears throat> I have enough of them like I try not to collect things for the sake of collecting <laughs> because yeah when it comes to books you don't want to do that Ugh. books can really add up to put it lightly but I'm actually not doing too bad in terms of like my um my book cord even for like the work I do here I tend to really like use a lot of stuff up. I'm, si I'm actually kind of surprised lately at how much I've been using up. I've been like really trying to, like what I'm doing is I notice when I have something 
that I feel like I have too much of, that's what I'm going to use. And I'm going to kind of keep on using it until I feel like I've gotten it down. And that's actually been a very helpful, like, way to go about doing things lately. Like, <clears throat> these old technical drawings are so fun. This is actually from an old car mechanics book. And you know, the funny thing is, it was the book that I used for the very first junk journal that I ever made. And I still keep the insides of it because um, I, I just love working with it. It's really nice paper. And it's funny, the reason that I bought it was not even for journaling. It was actually for my dad and I got it at a Goodwill outlet store um, in the bins when I was there because my dad by trade like he was a mechanic and it was a you know an old book and my dad often like collects those books um, because he, he likes to work on classic automobiles and like you know it's good to have some of those for um, the information that they have and so I picked it up for him but then he ended up not needing it not wanting it so I said okay I will take it back and then who knows like I'd eventually start using it to make journals what is this a little bit of paper here music paper Oops. I missed a corner. Let's just glue there. I know some people don't like making collage boards because it's like it uses a lot of glue. I don't mind. I feel like for what you get, it's like they're pretty cool. need one more little thing okay. all right it's a nice color combo I think I still have just about, I want to say, 20 minutes. Um, let's see. Oh, look at this Richard Scary. How cute. So I'm not going to use that on the collage board. I think it would um, very quickly flavor the whole, the whole theme of the collage board. It wouldn't be a collage board anymore. It would be a Richard Scary board. Last time I read my daughter this book about Clara the Rhinoceros, and I think I'd heard of Clara beforehand, but it was nice to read her story about, like, so Clara was a rhinoceros that existed, like, I forget when, I'm going to say, like, you know, probably in the 1800s, um, and she ended up, like, being orphaned, and her... She had a caregiver who ended up like selling her to kind of an adventurer and that guy like fell in love with her and they traveled, I mean, extensively around Europe and, um, you know, they carried her on a, in so many different ways, like, you know, on a wagon, like a wooden wagon um, that they built to, to carry her. And then at one point she was, they built a raft out of like trees to carry her over like the ocean. And, you know, she had to be like lifted in these hoists that they built. Like it was just all this crazy story, but it was essentially because most of the world at that time had never seen a rhinoceros. They were believed to be like a mythical beast kind of. And so, he was able to make a lot of money parading this rhinoceros around, but 
he actually did care for her quite well. Um, she lived to be, I believe, 17, or they were together for 17 years. It's kind of an interesting story. I'm going to use this sparkly paper. This goes back to the fairy journal days. And it's really, really nice paper. Okay. I guess we can use some of this now that we're getting into greens. There we go. lovely old picture. I think I'm going to use that for something. Just put it up there. Um, humana, humana. What next? What next? Yeah, let's do that. That's from an old Edgar Allan Poe book. I remember. I'm getting a little deeper in the scraps now. <laughs> I think I used that when I made like a dark academia book. Okay. And I think what I will do before I end up using these, because I've used scrapbook paper and I'm just using glue stick, I'm probably going to add some random like stitching. Oh, I definitely glued the wrong side of that. I wanted this side. It's so much prettier. Oh, what to do? Do I use this? Yeah, I'll just use this side. There's times where I literally will like let something dry so I can <laughs> use it when I glue the wrong side. Because I am no stranger to gluing the wrong side of things, believe me. Yeah, let's add that. That's kind of cool. I feel like roses, like when it comes to journal making, they kind of go with anything. I just like them. They just always add like a nice element. Hmm. Yeah, let's do that. Let me just need one more little bit just to cover things here. What do we want to do with this one? Is there something that would be neat to start off with? Um, hmm. Let's go 
with this. Maybe we'll do something kind of neutral. Who knows? Got all this neutral paper hanging around. Oh, that's cool. That's okay. It's all it's all collage. We're allowed to tear things off kilter. <laughs> Oh, that paper is so nice. It's like so thin and it just glues down so perfectly. I love it. I'm actually going to take another little strip of the other side of it. Because <clears throat> I want to cover at the bottom. A little lower. There. That's good. Use this other side. It's a nice little strip. I'm looking at my scrap box thinking, wow, I really used a lot, but then I'm looking at my desk going, hmm, nope, not so much, a little bit, but not so much. <laughs> it's okay. Okay, right here. Right. So that one's done. So I think we are pretty much at like time or close to it. Um, I'm going to move this out of the way, except for these little cardinal stamps that I put together are going to go in my snippets. And my bin still looks just as full as it ever did. <laughs> I don't know how scraps do that, but like they're really good at multiplying and like just not not changing just staying as they always were all right let's see how many we made okay one two three four five six seven all right so we have seven collage boards and i would say you can get between 
you know, two to six pieces of ephemera from all of, you know, your collage boards. So, um, yeah, I feel pretty good about that. I'm happy that we made these because we used up scraps and we have some really pretty backgrounds. I had a lot of nice paper hanging out in my scrap bin. So thank you for joining me and I will talk to you tomorrow for Mass Make March. Bye for now.